Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by John Dabrowski, who is in Nottingham in the UK. How are you doing, John? Very well, thank you, John. Very well indeed. Yeah. And John was a former international and professional basketball player, and now he is a mental resilience expert, is what we're going to talk about today. And you have uh, published two books, uh, Off the Wall, How to Develop World-Class Mental Resilience, and the newer one, I think, is 100 Days to Mental Resilience. Just come out, that one, that's right. Yeah. Excellent. And that's what we're going to talk about today, is how to achieve mental resilience. So... Um, number one, let, let's let's just baseline it, John. When you talk about mental resilience, maybe define what that means because I'm not sure. I mean, I guess if I ask five different people, I'll probably get five different definitions. Yeah, I guess it's how you respond to pressure situations. Uh, you can get two people; one can respond to the same scenario exactly and collapse in a heap. The other one can literally take it on as a challenge and thrive through the situation. Same scenario but it's about how they respond. And that's where mental resilience comes in. And it's the mindset. It's what goes on inside the head. And that's where I work. Mm -hmm. So um, obviously there's a lot of pressure and <laughs> around today and people are under pressure probably, you know, obviously from the pandemic, from who knows what their business is like, who knows if they have a business or the job or whatever, all mm -hmm. of these things. Um, so how do you start the process of really trying to build your mental resilience, perhaps even at a time when, it's been tested to the full. Yes, absolutely. Well, I, I've been through a few things. I'm 66 years of age now, 66. Mm -hmm. I get my pension, which is fantastic. But I'm going till I'm 80, minimum, maybe 85 now, because I've had mm -hmm. to transition my entire business. So I'm living proof, I guess. I've done it twice. Yeah. 10 years ago, I was um, made redundant, lost everything, and had to rebuild. And I've been, developed this business over a period of time. And then a year ago, well, nine months ago, the pandemic hit. And I lost entirely everything. I had my best year ever and suddenly it was gone. So I had to make a decision. Do I just give up? I could have retired. <laughs> I'm right. 65, yeah. 66 now. I didn't. I transitioned my business completely uh, to go online. And I'm now online delivering stuff all over the world. And I'm finding it really enjoyable and amazing. And it was down to a mindset. And so developing mindset is really important. And having a positive mindset, there are massive health benefits to it as well. Um, lots of research evidence that I go through in my books and in my mm -hmm. sessions that I deliver. And um, like I say, it's, it's down to that resilience. Now, the mind, the conscious mind, can only think of one thing at a time. The right. subconscious, trillions. <laughs> but the <laughs> conscious mind, one. So while you focus on a negative situation, you can only think of that one thing. Also, very important, is that what you think about is what you feel. What you mm -hmm. think about is what you feel. Very important. Whatever you, you're experiencing is what you're thinking up here. And so that's critical. Those two principles are critical. And so um, when you focus on that negative situation, you're feeling negative. Yeah. So you start to go down and you go into that spiral of negativity. Energy levels go down. Everything starts to... to be, so you have to shift across to something positive. And if you can shift it across to something positive, immediately you start to feel better. You start to feel a lot better. And so one technique I use all the time, every day, all day, and I teach this to many, many people, is for 30 seconds to one minute, list off in your head everything that you're grateful for. Gratitude is massive. There are books written galore on them, and, and the power of it is amazing. In my masterclasses, I go through the science behind it. There are certain chemicals kick off, parts of the brain kick off when you're being grateful. And suddenly, right. because you've moved away from being negative to positive, you start to feel better. You have yeah. more energy. So that's one of them. Uh, no, and, and I think that's so. I think that's so profound, and, and I hope people um, really take that on board. I'll tell you, to be perfectly honest, right here in front of me, I have a list of five things that I have up on a list here of, of five things that I'm extremely grateful for, and that's what oh. I use. That's what I use when the going gets tough. Is just to remind myself. Um, mm. But even even if you, I mean, especially today, I mean, if you if you wake up in the morning, I mean, you already got something to be grateful for, right? You, here's another day in front of you. If you yeah. wake up in a nice bed, you've got something to be grateful for. So I think I think part of it is going and looking at things to be grateful for and realizing how much abundance you already have in your life. 
Absolutely. One of the things I used to do is I, I always said to myself, I'd be happy when I hit yeah. my target. I was in sales a lot. So end of the month, I'd hit my target. So all month long, I'd be like, mm -hmm. come on, I can do it. I can do it. I'd get there. And within two hours, I was happy for two hours. And then suddenly, right, what's next? And I'd be unhappy for a month. And then I'd yeah. celebrate. And I thought, hang on, what's going on here? I'll be honest with you, I had a near fatal car accident three years ago. That made me think a little bit. I could have gone. I didn't. And so mm. now I want to enjoy every day. So now every day I use mindfulness, which is quite simply, you know, you'll know about that. But what I do yes. is I capture 10, 15, 20 second moments many times a day of everything that I, I see and appreciate. And so I'll see the leaves on the floor and I make a point of stopping and just go, wow, or the birds feeding on my feeder. Mm or an old couple holding hands. And just by doing that, I'm feeling happy many times a day. And so I want to enjoy the journey. And so I'm happy every day. And also I enjoy work. I've learned to enjoy it. And I love that feeling of coming home and having, or, or now staying at home and going downstairs yeah. <laughs> and having worked really hard. And that feeling of just switching off at seven o'clock and having an entire evening to play. Yeah. Really like so, uh, so starting with with gratitude, I think that's a great starting point because a lot of people will listen to you know things like this and they'll say mindset. Yeah, I've heard that before and be mindful, but it and that's why I like your book. You know, hundred days to mental resilience. Like that, there's a there's a path. So, let's face it. A lot of people try this kind of stuff and give up very quickly on it. How do you sustain it and actually really train your train your mind to to change your mindset? Absolutely. I, I've got uh, five pillars that I stick to as five pillars of mental resilience and they're commitment, uh, control, self-belief, focus and motivation. And the one, and I'm developing some more now, but I think more important than all those five put together is consistency. I think consistency mm. is the key word to success in anything. Yeah. I became an international basketball player. I wasn't the most talented. I was average. But I kept going where others finally gave up and I made it to play internationally and, and pro professionally. And I still hold the British record for the most points scored in a match. 98 Fantastic. points in a match. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and that was consistency. And so the book 100 Days is, is that. It's like reading a little bit every day. And it's just a couple of pages every day. And it starts to build resilience as you read mm -hmm. that book. And so I have a set routine every morning where I've got a dream board or a vision board where I've got yep. things I want to achieve before I die. And I look at all these pictures and I imagine myself, I visualize, I do a lot of visualization, very powerful. I visualize myself having achieved all these wonderful things. Some of them are just experiences across the world, some things to help people. Mm -hmm. And within 20 minutes, I'm feeling energized. I'm feeling excited. Right. I've got a couple of motivation books that I read, just a couple of minutes. And so I start every day the same way. I start with energized positivity. And so I start the day with energy. Yeah, and I think that's, and I think again, I just want to underline that because I think that's incredibly in, important for people to understand is, you know, how you start your day, the mental inputs that you allow into your brain. And frankly, we, we live in very strange times. And if you start your day with the news, for instance, uh, probably not going to start off your day very well because the news isn't designed to inform anymore. It's designed to provoke. So regardless of where you sit on the political spectrum, you're likely to get annoyed or angry about something if you look at the news. Same with social media and all of that kind of stuff. You really have to be careful what inputs you allow in throughout the day, but particularly before you start your day. Great point you make. And I'm just developing a new leadership uh, one-hour uh, session I'm developing, which I'm delivering next week. And in there, it talks about the first few minutes of the day. And it's so powerful because how you start the day, so you should never check your emails, never check your phone in the first hour of your day. You mustn't do it because there's a chance of something being negative mm. in there that just yeah. destroys your day. And so you need to do something and it could be deep breathing exercise. It could be a quick walk somewhere. It could be reading a motivation book. It could be watching an inspirational YouTube video, which I do quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And that gets you going. And, and once you start, there's like a scale like this up here is positive high energy sunshine down here is darkness depression and low energy mm -hmm. and if you don't do what i'm saying you start at the bottom of that that, that uh, scale and then if something goes wrong you add it your day is going to be tough but if you can start in a positive way and something goes wrong it's easy to get back up again and that's one of the keys so starting the day is critical and that's again consistency 
Um, and, and, and in fact, I'll just say that today I had to sort something out with my mum. She's 97, still going. But I had to sort out and removing her downstairs. So I didn't have my uh, little session this morning, my quiet time for an hour. I didn't have it. I had to rush straight off to her house, get the decorators organised. Yeah. I had to come back home. The first thing I did was to have my hour at mm. 11 o'clock. I didn't care. And then the rest of the day was great because of doing right. that. Yeah, and, and I love that idea of consistency because I think that's so critical. And what you mentioned earlier about mindfulness and just taking moments in the day to notice things. And, and, and I think that's such an incredibly powerful thing to think about. And hopefully people will take away from this because we live in this strange culture. It's, I mean, people say, well, I'm the busiest I've ever been. And I always retort, well, you're the most distracted you've ever been, to be honest, you know, <laughs> um, busier, maybe not so much. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I just think that we have to start sorting out and, and being more discerning about the things that we allow interrupt our days. And as you say, if you're going to interrupt your day, you should interrupt it with something like you said, like looking at the birds and the trees or appreciating something rather than yeah. all the other gar garbage coming at you. Yes, and catching that. That's right. And there's one principle I use as well, and it's a reframe technique. Uh, and mm. what that is, is finding the positive or, or the seed of something positive in every negative situation. Now, mm. I believe there's no situation ever without something positive coming out of it. Now, that's a bold right. statement. Now, my father, my dad passed away. He's dead. He died 10 years ago. What could be positive about that? He's dead. Well, at mm. the funeral, I reconnected with two relatives that I hadn't right. seen for 40 years. We're now very close friends. So if I think about my friends, I feel good. My relatives, I feel good. Yeah. If I think about my father, I feel sad. So yeah. at least something came out of it. And where you focus, remember what you focus on is what you feel. And, so, mm -hmm. and, and it gives you hope that at least something came out of it. So in this devastation of, of pandemic and all the devastation of, of job losses and so on, if people can look for the seed of something. I mean, I've developed this business because I was made redundant for the third time. And the only reason I'm doing what I'm doing now is because I was made redundant. If I hadn't mm -hmm. been, I wouldn't be doing this, this amazing yeah. life, traveling the world, uh, international speaker. Um, well, I was traveling the world. I will be again yeah. <laughs> now the yeah. vaccines are coming out. <laughs> but yeah, it's that. It's finding the positive. So two key principles I work with is gratitude and find the positive in every negative situation, something positive. And that just keeps you lifted up because the resilience is about getting back up again. It's about yeah. falling down seven times and getting back up eight times. You've heard that before, but... I'm yeah no absolutely and uh and i love i, I love uh, chuck norris does a lot of work you know the martial arts guy but he does a lot yeah. of work with um with with kids and stuff and he always says to them when somebody's about to quit he goes well what if this was the last obstacle and you quit just before the last oh. obstacle to you achieving something which is a great which is a great mind trick oh. i use that myself now um because it's a great mind trick do you know what? That's so brilliant because that's exactly why I've not given up. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I want, I've wanted to give up a thousand times. In the last 10 years of this journey, I wanted to. But I thought, if I give up now, I'll never know how close I was. Yeah. And then suddenly all these things, I've been to Dubai four times and America three oh. times and, and Finland and Germany and traveling the world. This exciting place. Now it's, now it's virtual, of course, but then, that, like I said yeah. before, that will come back. But I think that's what uh, when you do what you're talking about when you when you're when you're mindful when you start building that mental re resilience and 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 the gratitude and all of that is the the doors open the journey gets uh, more expansive and I think when we yeah. when we stay very focused on on where we are right now and let everything get on top of us that the path gets very narrow. Yes, and it's, it's being brave. It's, it gives you that mm -hmm. ability to fail. It's actually good to fail. I believe that if you don't fail, now when I say fail, uh, it's more mm. mistakes, making mistakes, yeah. and having a go at things. And as long as you learn from it, then it's a learning experience and you grow. You will never fulfill your potential unless you make mistakes. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. You have to go for something. You, it goes along, you adjust. It's like a plane going from New York to London. On autopilot, it's uh, off course 99% of the time because yeah. the, wind, the wind will blow it and it adjusts. Mm -hmm. And that's what your life should be like. You go yeah. that way. And as long as you learn from it, you're growing. Yeah, and, and absolutely. And I think that that's, a, that's critically important as, uh, as well. And um, what's another tip from your 100-day your journey to mental resilience? I mean, especially the ones early on, because I do think it's, it's always the early part of the journey that's the hardest. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, uh, and I guess 
for me it's it's being open to learning and being given mm -hmm. advice there was one thing that springs to mind and that is um, when I was first starting I was decorating and I was going to meetings and I used to hire a car no in fact no I didn't I didn't do that at first I had an old car and I mm -hmm. went to this meeting with one guy and he, he paid me quite a lot of money to coach his staff and I was turning up in this battered old car right and I didn't really think much about it um, and then at the end of the session, when we all finished, he paid me and everything. And it was like a series of a few weeks. Um, he said, oh, just a piece of advice, John, he said. I'd, I'd recommend you get a better car. The, the image isn't right for that. Mm -hmm. Now, I listened. I listened to that. And what I did is I couldn't afford a new car at that time. And so I hired a car or I left my car and I walked <laughs> or got a taxi mm -hmm. or something. But very quickly, I got a better car and the image was there. So it's being open to listening and being aware of um and, and being humble enough to listen yeah and, uh, and, and i think that, that that's that's great advice too because i think uh we're, we're slowly losing the ability to listen because we live in a soundbite world where we just grab the first kind of couple of words we hear and then we make up our minds about things and humility i mean i think humility is in mm. uh, unfortunately is in short supply right now everybody's an expert on everything it seems yeah, yeah. And, and you know people do say that uh, Kind of, I'm a nice guy, and and when they when they book me, they expect this this wild man to be jumping up and down stage. Right. And I'm I'm not. I'm a more relaxed, calm. Uh -huh. but I've got an authentic story, where I was born to Polish parents, and I had a problem with language. I had no confidence. I had to build all that, and then ten years ago, I lost everything, and then again a year ago, I lost everything, and it's kind of nice that uh, you've got that consistency and self belief. One of the five pillars is self belief, mm -hmm. and self belief is different to confidence. Confidence can be situational. You can be confident right. in one age. So I was confident playing basketball as an 18-year-old in front of mm -hmm. hundreds of people. Um, uh, that same 18-year-old couldn't introduce Professor Brown to four students sat around a table in, in college. Sure. Yeah. And I was a wreck. And yet, so th th there's a difference between confidence and, and it's situational, where self-belief is that deep down knowing that you've got it. And you have mm -hmm. to use your inner voice. Now, we haven't, we haven't talked about the inner voice, but that's so powerful. The inner voice, it's going on all the time. And we're not aware of it, but it's nearly always negative. And yeah. that's what destroys you. That's what makes you or breaks you is your inner voice. And so I've got in one of my sessions how to create a positive inner voice. And I create a mantra of several phrases which are positive, And you roll those over. And remember, the mind can only think of one thing at a time. So when you're nervous, yeah. the reason you're nervous is because you're thinking something negative. The minute right. you start thinking something positive, the nerves go and the butterflies go. That's a great technique. Yeah, and, and I, I love that you brought up the inner voice because I think it's in Psychology Today or one of those that had a statistic. I can't remember. It was like it was either 70 or maybe even 80 percent of your, your daily self-talk is negative. And yes. I think that's a critically important thing to to understand and to realize that you do have this chatter going on in your head and you can stop it. As you said, you can if you if you adopt like the, the, the strategies that you said. Absolutely. We can choose how we respond to around about 90% of everything that happens on a daily basis. Now, the big stuff, death, divorce, and so on, mm -hmm. we can't respond to. But the general day-to-day -day stuff, once you know that you have a choice how to respond, you can take a step and you don't have to go down that usual path, the train track. You can stop once you've learned some techniques and go a different way. It, it's, it's liberating. It really is. Yeah, because, you know, like they say, I mean, you may not have control over all of the circumstances around you but you have control over how you react to those circumstances that's the key absolutely and, and and i started with that that you can choose how you respond to most things and it's not what happens to you in life that counts it's how you respond which makes all the difference and that's the big difference between success and failure yeah listen fantastic um uh, all of John's information is going to be below this video here. Uh, but before we go, John, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Fabulous. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm John Dabrowski and I'm an executive coach. I run masterclasses and I speak on stage and I specialize in mental resilience. That's all I do. And it's a wonderful privilege to be helping so many people across the world now and helping them quite simply with what I've described today. As once it all starts in here, it's how you think, how you speak and how you act. And once you start inside here, change the words that you speak and change the actions, then everything in your life changes. And that's what I'm all about. And my website will probably down there, but it's jvmindcoach.com. You've probably got that, haven't you? Like yeah, Jack absolutely. Daniel. 
<laughs> yeah, like Jack Daniels. There you go. <laughs> that, that'll give you a whole other experience. But, uh, <laughs> stick with the mind, the mind resilience here. But yeah. I do think, and just to underline everything, I do think that, uh, as John said, you know, sometimes you have to look for the positive in things. And yes, we are in this very strange situation. But however, on the flip side, maybe this is providing you with the opportunity for some self-reflection, for some investment in yourself. So please check out what John does and check out his books because I think it's a fantastic opportunity if you want to look at it that way. Yeah, and I can deliver in America now, of course. It's all online. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm <laughs> Excellent. All right, thanks again, John. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.